Ah, yes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Plays and Fades DFS edition for week 16. I got to apologize last week, feeling under the weather, couldn't come into the studio, didn't want to get the rest of the guys on VM sick. So there was no video for Plays and Fades in week 15. Now with week 16 on the menu, just got to take care of some housekeeping stuff. So this Sunday on the Veterans Minimum YouTube channel, both the guys from Brodo Fantasy and myself, Degeneration Bets, we're going to be doing a live stream, taking you all the way up until kickoff, starting at around 10 a.m. on Sunday, up until about the 12, 30, 1 o'clock range, right before lineups lock. You get a lot of information throughout the week that comes Sunday, everything changes. Guys are active, guys are inactive. So be on the lookout there. Come show love and show some support. With that being said, let's dive into this week's plays and fades. Starting off with the quarterback that we like, Russell Wilson. All the years playing DFS, I've noticed one thing. Last week's popular play, when he busts, next week nobody plays him and he tends to smash that next week. Russell Wilson last week at home in an ideal matchup against the LA Rams had one of his worst outings of the entire year. Now, in a must-win game, this guy is responsible for 30 of the 34 touchdowns that Seattle has scored this year on offense. Let's also add that the Cowboys are also in a must-win situation. Russell Wilson is one of the more expensive quarterbacks this week, but I think he's going to bounce back in an ideal matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. You don't need to worry about weather, which was a concern last week in Seattle. And with the Cowboys getting Zeke back, you could see Dallas having a big lead and having Russell have to throw from behind. Fire up Wilson with confidence this week. Next up, one of the two running backs I like. One in particular being featured in this game, the return of Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke is coming back after his six game suspension and the word out of Dallas upon Zeke's return is that he's in better shape now than he was prior to his suspension. On average prior to his suspension, Ezekiel Elliott was seeing 29 and a half touches per game. For the people out there that look at the game log and they haven't seen him play in a couple weeks, I think he might go under owned. The matchup is ideal against Seattle who's not as good as many people think against the run. The Legion of Boom is no more. A lot of people are banged up. And I think this is a game that Zeke could get going and you see a lot of this from him. Next up, another running back I like. We have to monitor the status of one particular running back in that backfield also. Devontae Freeman. Here's the thing. Devontae Freeman on FanDuel is $7,000. For his workload, what he's been getting the last couple weeks, and it's translated to Atlanta Falcons victories, he is underpriced. Last year, this guy was in the McCoy... Le'Veon Bell price range. He was in that top four to five running back tier on both FanDuel and DraftKings. Now we're getting him at a significant discount in a matchup that he's had a lot of success in the past. Even so two weeks ago on Thursday Night Football where he scored a touchdown. Especially if Tevin Coleman is ruled out once again. Fire him up right away. Next up, a wide receiver. We're gonna pair with our quarterback this week in tournaments, Doug Baldwin. Pretty much everything I said about Russell Wilson applies to Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin last week in an ideal matchup against the LA Rams laid an egg. I believe he had one catch. I should know this because I saw my money go down when I was rostering him. We've pointed out many times on this particular segment that the way to beat the Dallas Cowboys is through the slot wide receiver. They've given up big games to Larry Fitzgerald, Cooper Cup. Sterling Shepard. The list goes on and on of wide receivers out the slot that have done damage. He's coming off a bad game, probably going to go under owned. He's priced up with some big names too, so people might gravitate elsewhere. But Doug Baldwin, I could see one of those big Doug Baldwin games, and it's coming. Him and Russell Wilson, I think, are going to smash this week. I would make them core plays in my tournaments. Next up, a wide receiver that I love this week, and if you've listened to my podcast at Degeneration Bets on Twitter, Degeneration Bets, the name of the podcast, every Friday, the DFS episode. You know my love affair for Didi Westbrook. Didi Westbrook last week was held to two catches for I believe 21 yards. It was the Keelan Cole show and it was McKinnon's, I believe his name is, coming off the practice squad who lit it up. What's going to happen? Everybody's going to go back to the well with those guys. This guy's going to go on their own. Marquise Lee is out. Alan Hearns is nowhere near 100%. Everybody's going to forget about my boy Didi. Gotta fire up Didi this week. He is a number one receiver that's gonna see eight to 10 targets and he's priced like a number three wide receiver. Moving on over to the fade section, as you can see, there's no tight end or defense that we like. There's also not a quarterback that I'm really fading. For the most part, I think all those guys from Russell Wilson down to Matt Ryan are in line for big games. Just pick and choose there. Also, let's remember one thing about DFS. Sometimes paying up for a quarterback isn't the sharp play. If you can get 15 points out of your quarterback, there are a lot of quarterbacks at the low tiers that could provide 15 points for you. And you could upgrade elsewhere at expensive positions. With that being said, a running back 
I have not rostered at all this year. Alvin Kamara. This dude is the number two running back on the Saints, and he's priced up with McCoy, with Le'Veon Bell, with that tier of running backs. And I'm sorry, I'm not paying over $8,000 for a running back that's probably gonna get 12 touches, though he's been very impressive and very effective. Vegas has him as the favorite for rookie of the year this year on the offensive side. But I'm just not paying for that. Give me Mark Ingram every time. He's gonna see lower ownership and it's more of a safer play. If you're playing cash games, you gotta go with Ingram. If you're playing tournaments, I can see why you go up to Kamara because a lot of people have my mindset. With that being said, I'd much rather go elsewhere instead of Kamara. Moving on over to another running back, you need to monitor the status of the guy in his backfield. Giovanni Bernard. Mixon was still in concussion protocol the last couple weeks and we haven't seen him. Prior to his injury on Monday Night Football, Mixon was becoming the bell cow. He was becoming the exciting player everybody thought that he was in college in the NFL. Two games prior to his concussion on Monday Night Football against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mixon was averaging over 20 touches per game. The moment he comes back into that lineup, I think that Giovanni Bernard is going to go back to his third down pass catching role. I think especially if Mixon's in, stay away from Giovanni Bernard. Next up, a wide receiver that I think is going to be shadowed by the number one corner according to Pro Football Focus this year, Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard last week had a monster game, also scored a long touchdown. Two weeks prior, he was held to, I believe, two targets and laid an egg where he was chalk. He was one of the more talked up plays on the slate. What happens? Lays an egg, the next week he smashes. I'm going back to him laying an egg this week. Patrick Peterson is one of the rare corners in this NFL that does shadow side to side when it comes to defending wide receivers. He lines up in the slot, lines up on the right, on the left, so on and so forth. I think a lot of people are gonna go chasing that Shepard game. Shepard is not the Giants wide receiver I want this week. You want a sneaky play that I think nobody's gonna play? You might even see that greater than sign in your tournaments, you might be the only guy playing them. Take a flyer on Roger Lewis, especially on DraftKings 3400. Roger Lewis over the last two weeks, 22 targets. If I'm if I'm rostering anybody from the Giants, it's probably gonna be Roger Lewis. Next up, a tight end I'm staying away from this week, especially because of his price, Rob Gronkowski. I know you might think I'm crazy because Gronk has been a Buffalo killer his entire career. With that being said, he does play better against Buffalo in Buffalo. Gronk is from Buffalo, he shows up for all his fans, and his family and friends that come to see him at those games. With that being said, I could definitely see the Patriots doing something where they try to protect Gronk. If you remember, Gronk laid that vicious hit on Tredavious White, the cornerback, the rookie cornerback from the Buffalo Bills, and he got a lot of heat for it. I could definitely see Buffalo maybe taking a little stab at his knee or something, hitting him low. Gronk has been injury prone over the last couple years, so I can see them protecting Gronk. Last but not least, a defense I'm gonna stay away from who had a pretty solid game last week, the Denver Broncos. Denver is playing in Washington this week, one o'clock kickoff, one of the many times that you see a West Coast team traveling east. Denver this year in particular has struggled in that time slot. Only one in three against the spread, so what that tells you is that they tend to not cover, tend to get blown out in those games. I went out on a limb on veterans minimum and I said that I think this is an ideal destination for Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is one of the hot free agents this summer coming up. And I think he's gonna show out in front of John Elway in Denver. The Denver Broncos are the sixth most expensive defense on FanDuel. I will much rather go elsewhere. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging in there with me after missing last week. Give me a follow at LamVM10 on all social media. At Degeneration Bet is a Twitter handle for Degeneration Bets. Every Friday you get DFS Fridays where we give you a deep dive on all our favorite plays and fades of the weekend. Also, check out that live stream that I mentioned in the beginning. Also, the Facebook page. Thank you very much. Happy holidays and take down some tournaments.